Our goal was to see if we could pick out a group of uh, women who get no benefit from chemotherapy even though they have very high risk disease. In fact, these were premenopausal women. To, to answer this question, we had to go back to some quite old trials that were done when it was still an open question whether chemotherapy benefited women at all. And at that time, um, only quite high-risk women were being considered for chemotherapy. And this study, the Danish Breast Cancer Group Trial 77B, it was called, um, the women who were enrolled were premenopausal. They were mostly node positive with high-risk disease, but not metastatic disease. The idea was to use a definition of low-risk breast cancer called luminal A that my group and others have developed over the past decade. Uh, because the material that was available from this older trial was in the format of tissue microarrays, the, the only way to test for the luminal A status was using uh, immunistic chemistry. So there's a panel of six biomarkers, ERPR, HER2, K67, and a couple of basal markers that can be used to identify the different subtypes. And for here, what we were really concerned about was the group called luminal A, and they're defined as ER positive, HER2 negative, but also low proliferation by K67 and high progesterone receptor, into signifying that they're still uh, highly hormone-dependent tumors, most likely. The idea would be they would be low risk molecularly, but in this particular trial, because all these women were node positive, they were premenopausal, and um, in many cases they had large tumors, clinically they would be considered a relatively high risk group. We identified um, over 600 cases that we could give a subtype, and, and about 170 of them were luminal A, and we compared their response to chemotherapy with all the ones who were non-luminal A, and the short version of it is the non-luminal A patients did very well. The chemotherapy improved their outcomes a great deal. Hazard ratio was 0.5. And the luminal A patients, on the other hand, had uh, completely overlapping Kaplan-Meier curves, whether they received chemotherapy or not. Hazard ratio was one. So there was no sign that despite them being premenopausal with large tumors and node positivity, if they were luminal A, there was no sign that the chemotherapy was benefiting them. Well, this was an older regimen, a first-generation chemotherapy, so it was classic CMF chemotherapy. Some of the women also got uh, cyclophosphamide as a single agent, but that drug is certainly still used today and is considered the most active drug in many regimens. That is a question for the research community, isn't it, or the clinical community, because this is a bit of a, a departure. It, it's part of a um, spectrum of changes we've seen um, over the past few decades of realizing that we can back off somewhat in certain situations on how aggressive our therapy needs to be. Uh, many people accept that if you have other low-risk characteristics, you have a small tumor, it's ER positive and being treated with tamoxifen in older women, and therefore your prognosis is very good, that it's definitely safe to avoid chemotherapy in those situations. Even if the chemotherapy worked, it would only be able to make a small difference in a, in a really uh, good prognosis situation. Here we're dealing with something that in principle is a little more risky. These are women who do have a higher risk of relapse to begin with, but we're saying that if they're luminal A subtype, that risk won't get any better. It's a bit more of um, a paradigm shift um, than uh, other studies have shown, and um, so many people would may not feel comfortable with this data on its own changing therapy. Uh, it would qualify as level two evidence because it was a, a, a formal prospective study of an existing clinical trial, so a prospective retrospective study, and many feel for that to be practice changing, you may need to repeat it or have some other corroborating evidence.